Welcome everybody, Braden and CRA meeting, special meeting, uh, Wednesday, April 13th, 1.30 p.m. Uh, meeting is called to order. Are there citizens comments not on the agenda? Going once, going twice, gone. Um, consent agenda, item, uh, well, actually, it's consent agenda. Mr. Chair? Yeah. I move to approve the consent agenda, which consists of item A through E. Okay. That is a motion and a second. All in yeah, favor? Hold on a second. <coughs> a through E? A, B, D, C, A, B, C, D, E. A through E. Okay. I've got two of them I'd like to pull, but I don't know what, All right. what numbers they are. They are the city. CRAB 22-03. Yeah, that's D. CRA 22-02 uh, budget items. All right. Want to amend? I'm sorry. Can you tell me if it's item A, B, C, or D? I, I don't. It's not C, marked. C, 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 he, yeah. You said C and D. I don't see a marking on here that says it's A, B, C. You don't see a marking right next okay. to yeah. where it says? Yeah. Yeah. On the agenda. On there, but not on the actual. No. Yep. No, not on the actual okay. document. I don't. I can't link them. I'd have to read them. All. I, I just so pulled you, these you two out. You want to pull O two and O three. O two and O three. Yeah, that okay, would be C and D. And D. Okay. Okay, so I will move for approval of the consent agenda items A, B, and E. Second. Okay, that's a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Sanders. Aye. Oh. <clears throat> Item C2202. Um, second item says increase of other sources of income. What, what is that? Seventy-two thousand nine fifty-six. No. It says it's line two. It says increase one hundred seventy-two thousand nine fifty-six. Yes. Um, we. This is the first time we're bringing all the revenues from last year. We're adjusting all the revenues that we're receiving. So. Um, so this is an adjustment. It's not an actual. It's it's, from, it, it's it's residual that we're bringing forward from last year to this year, oh. and it's going to go towards programs, the appropriate sources. Oh, I'm just curious if there's money come in that <coughs> we need to thank somebody. All right, thank you. And the um, um, you've got the next item that I show. I'd like to have an explanation. We've got legal fees of thirteen thousand dollar increase. Um, as we're having, inc uh, our budgets have to balance, so when re as revenues increase, the expenses also have to match the, the two amounts. So I started reallocating and looking at some of the expenses that we have. So we've had between the contract with HTG, between the different contracts with the MET, with uh, with Florida Opportunity Fund One. Uh, so each CRA has had more need for reviews of legal contracts. So I just wanted us at the same time to review that and make sure we have enough in the budget. Okay, so you don't have any actual uh, request for it or you just basing it on revenue? You just taking a percentage of revenue and saying, I, I don't know how you come up with it. Well, I projected that it's going to be probably more than what we originally budgeted because of increased based activity in, based on increased activity for contracts. So this is my estimate that we were, we're going to need more funding before the end of the year. All right. Um, consultant fees decrease. Is that uh, somebody that we didn't hire or what? Uh, give me one second. And they're right, right next line. No, it's the uh, I reduced the visioning uh, from 200 that we had budgeted 200,000 to 150,000. But no, 
explanation for the decrease? Just I, I believe it was probably over budgeted. So given some discussions and some quotes that I started like talking to different people, it's probably over budgeted. So I felt this we, we didn't need 200k for the visioning. Okay. Um, go ahead. Um, did you have consultants lined up, or was that just an estimate hold a placeholder? No, it was a placeholder based on my previous experience with consulting work. And so we had initially discussed about potentially doing a market study and a visioning uh, with charrettes and community involvement. Usually the market study is very expensive, but because uh, we hired Business Flare to do that market study, their price actually is much lower than I had anticipated. So that's why I'm offsetting some of the visioning costs because of that market study. Uh, so that 50,000 decrease now makes the budget what? What would be the budget now for consultants? 150K. 150,000. So it's still a lot, um, but, so it, but definitely. I, I know that when you budget, you just, you know, you winged it a little bit. What about the attorney fees? What's, the, what's in the budget now for that? It was $7,000 in the budget, and we're increasing that to 20K. 20K. All right, and the next item was a $200,000 capital outlay. That's an increase. Um, give me one second. Yes. Um, No, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, so we had budgeted for 750000 and that would bring it up to 950000 Okay, based on what? Have we, that, that's precise. Based on that extra revenue that we didn't anticipate, so. Based on the 172000 that was just a rollover? Correct. You're going to spend more than what you're, you're going to spend two hundred, but you're only rolling over 172. How's that work? Uh, your, your comment was that we roll over uh, uh, adjustment of 172 increase, but right. we're spending 200,000 more in land acquisition that we haven't we, have, we, we haven't discussed this at all, have we? No, we're well, th we're discussing it now. This yeah. is my recommendation from so 172 more uh, overall 154,778 came in more from last year. 172 is just one part of that. So we have to adjust the expenses accordingly. So the visioning went down by 50,000, but another item went up by 200,000. So in order, so we're just looking at all the aligned items, how best to align the needs with this extra income. It's not extra revenue, it's just revenue that came in. Roll, roll over revenue from the previous year. Right. Okay. So I would have an objection to a $200,000 increase without a discussion of what we're going to have a land acquisition about. That's fine. I, I just, then I would need to f find out 200. Uh, it's open for discussion and then Ms. Marmee. I mean, it doesn't commit to anything. It doesn't, <coughs> this is just earmarking. <coughs> and if the right thing comes along, we have it budgeted that we can do it. Correct? You're not supposed to have a miscellaneous category in your budget, so you've got to put the money somewhere. If you want us to pay off more on the judicial garage, we can put it there. We can. Oh, no, we just didn't have a discussion about it. So. Right. No, and I'm giving you some options on where potentially you could put the money. You can <laughs> put it for public art. You can put it for paying more f towards the judicial garage. Um, we can. Um, Put it in my account. I'm sorry? Um, we can increase consultant fees and we can increase legal fees. As, or we can. You, you, you just, yeah, I, I got it, but it seemed like a large number. Right. And I don't know, you know. And I felt that that category was more general. So if in the future a project comes up that you would like, we can take money out of that and put it in a new category. In the next line item is 36,000 for uh, sidewalks. Did we, uh, are we finding that, that the sidewalk project we got in Ward 3 is uh, costing more or we just, just no, it was just, just it in, in case it does or in case we want more or something? It just made, to me, it made more sense to put it there again as a general category. There's been no I, I, I'm just yeah. curious if, 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 Absolutely. if we've had, you know, some conversations that 
hey, we're, we've got a budget for this because it's not, it's not there. I, I just, you know, I'm not challenging that. Um, uh, and then uh, projects and grants aid to private, 44,000. Is that uh, people, uh, is that, is that like affordable housing? Is that uh, uh, like CBD money or it, what is it? Can you repeat? I apologize. Is, is it the uh, 44,586? Oh, has a description of grants formerly aid to private organizations. So, spring so you're changing resolutions now. You're going to the other resolution. No, no, he's no, uh, the, the project page. and I'm just grants going down, the, going down the, 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 the list. The very last just seeing if anything has increased or if it's just it's just a matter of this is where I happen to move it. No increases, no, no requests, nothing like that. So we paid out uh, two of our contractual agreements, one with Spring Hill Suites and one with the Hampton Inn. So we had budgeted 130 for the Hampton Inn. It came in at 83,000 approximately. And Spring Hill Suites, we had budgeted 160,000 and it came at 112,000. And we're also proposing a slight increase in community events so that's what, and all of those three items would offset the f and be a decrease of forty-four thousand. Right, and while you're on that, you are preparing a um, a, a document for us so that we know in the future what we have to budget for for these uh, uh, monies to uh, pay the ad valorem tax on like those two projects you just mentioned. They yes, were lower than what you thought. The, the, the two. But now we're, we're, we know so that we can we know how many more years it is, and do we have a spreadsheet that shows? Yes. So that you can. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. We're we're creating an Excel file so that we're keeping track of all our contractual right, obligations. We, yeah. Yeah. We we could think we have right. more money than we actually have because we got a commitment out there. Okay. That's 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 all that. And then the the next room is item. Uh, Wait. Are you done with O2? Yeah, that was it. That was the last item on there. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> if you want to add some. Uh, then the, the next item is 2203, which is uh, item D. Uh, other sources of revenue, the second item what is other sources? Is that again a rollover? It, 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 it's a, roll, a, a rollover, rollover from, from the, several categories, right. projects that came through, yes. Right, okay. Um, <coughs> again, 10,000 legal fees. Uh, so th that was an uh, increase in 10,000. What was it and what is it? Um, again, we had budgeted for 10,000. Um, the proposal is to increase it to 20,000. Again, because we had some extensive back and forth with the amendments to the LURA, so I anticipate that we're gonna have more legal fees before the end of the year than we had budgeted. Okay. And again, you just threw the 100, 391,000 in the land acquisition because right. it was convenient, to, so it's easy to pull in and out. I, I got it. Uh, that's all I have. I have motion. I motion to approve. Can I do both of them at one time, or accept no, motion? Motion to approve uh, item C and D of the consent agreement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Braden CRA TEDx. Um, we. Uh, we have here um, the team that, uh, that is putting together a TEDx Bradenton uh, event, and um, had a, we had a conference call between the city, the CRA, and, uh, and the two lovely ladies, and I'll have them introduce themselves when they come up to give you a presentation. Um, and so we wanted uh, to, we're recommending that we support this event because it's gonna be um, nationwide and international uh, recognition for the city of Bradenton and so but we wanted you to hear from them about the potential value of this uh, event and for you to determine the amount of support if you so like. Yes. Yeah. 
Hi, good afternoon. My name is Evelyn Amodovar, and I am the licensee organizer for TEDx. And this is my co-organizer, I'll let her introduce her Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Catherine Ferrer. I am currently a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you may know of me from my former role at Realize Bradenton. I left Realize Bradenton to focus on continuing studies. I haven't found quite the right program yet, so um, most days I'm driving my kids to and from Louise R. Johnson. Um, in between that time, I also work for my husband's small business, and I have been watching TED Talks for like 20 years. So when I heard about this TEDx opportunity in Bradenton, I was like, sign me up. I will, you know, collate papers if that's what you need. I'm really excited that um, TEDx is coming. So I'm um, just here to support Evelyn. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you guys see the presentation on your screens? Yes, we yeah. can. Yeah. We have okay, screens. perfect. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, give you guys an overall structure of the conference and then also explain a little bit what TEDx is and what our vision is to highlight Bradenton during this event, and then just answer some questions that you may have. So the event, uh, TEDx Bradenton, it's a name, that's what we're licensed under. Uh, it takes place on September 9th. Uh, this year, and we have partnered with the Bishop Museum. They have <coughs> uh, joined us right away to uh, discuss having it in their planetarium. It's going to be an all-day event from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's going to feature 15 speakers, and the way that we have the structure of the day is that we're going to have five one-hour sessions with three speakers in each session and have uh, a logo artistic performance as well. So what is TEDx? TEDx really is a grassroots initiative. And what it is, it's created from the model of TED conferences for local communities to come together and collaborate on discussing uh, the brilliant ideas and the local talent that are happening in the community. It's organized by passionate individuals. Um, the current team right now, um, Catherine and I are heading the team. We do have somebody else who's helping with marketing and we have a team of curators who are helping uh, with recruiting speakers and sorting through the ideas. Um, it's again a, com a community volunteer venture. None of the organizers are paid, nor do we receive anything in exchange for TEDx. And we are li TEDx licensed individuals, not agencies, so there's no agency um, behind us with the licensing. It's just an individual um, venture. Do you want to talk a little bit about TEDx Bradenton? Yeah, the absolutely. Platform and the highlight of it. And, and I did say 20 years, but I guess I was exaggerating. Since really TED Talks were out on the internet, like I've been watching TED Talks, and I just think they're fascinating. <laughs> so um, you, we really thought that Bradenton would be a great platform. Instead of just aligning with the university, I see a lot of these TEDx conferences that happen at a university, and, are, and that's great. They have a whole sort of, um, you know, agenda in the way that they do that. And universities have a lot of resources kind of already at their disposal. <laughs> they've got, you know, students who are good at marketing, and they've got professors that lend their time, and they've got video equipment and lots of facilities and places. And this is really kind of a community-sourced TEDx experience that I think will be richer for it. I mean, we still have been in touch with universities and New College and some others that we're talking with as we get this off the ground, um, but I think the fact that it's so community-based is really wonderful. And then, as you probably have seen if you've ever watched a TEDx or TED Talk, they live on after the initial event, and these ideas are shared through YouTube and through the TEDx network to continue to inspire people all over the country, all over the world. You know, one example is here we are in Manatee County, and what if someone talks about manatees in their presentation or something, and then, uh, you know, students in Europe are watching a TEDx talk about Bradenton, you know, and manatees. So it's, it's those kinds of links and connections that we don't even yet know what can come from this, but I love the positioning of Bradenton as the kind of community where TED Talks are supported, you know, thriving, excited, and, and maybe even becoming an annual event.
And so one of the inspirations um, for me with TEDx is that Bradenton is already rich in access. I moved here um, eight years ago and I was hired right away by a company where I had no experience and they trained me. Um, from there, just yesterday, I graduated from um, Realize Bradenton Startup Circle. So there's a lot of access, there's a lot of things happening in Bradenton right now that we can highlight, and a lot of positive things, which is really the thing about TEDx, it's not a place to come and um, bring ideas on deficiencies, it's really just to highlight uh, wonderful things that are happening in our community and celebrate them. Um, one of the, so when I had to submit for license for TEDx, I did have to um, submit quite a few ideas for them uh, to give them an idea of what we wanted to highlight in Bradenton. One of the things uh, that really struck me about Bradenton is the Village of the Arts. It's a place, if you think about access, it's a place where not only artists have access to come and display their art, but people in the community don't have to pay a fee to go and see art, it's just there. And, and it really just adds to the community morale as well. So um, when I submitted the application, the first topic that I submitted, I said Village of the Arts. We have to highlight the Village of the Arts because it is just beautiful. It's something that's very unique to Bradenton. And I think it's something that really adds to the morale of the community. <clears throat> the other topics, as you can see, that we went over um, a few on the environment uh, as she was talking about the manatees, Manatee County. And um, a lot of people see manatees just in aquariums, so how great would it be to highlight the work that we're doing with the manatees right now, especially with the seagrass depletion and really a lot of innovation happening to make sure that we save the creatures. Um, again, the startup circle, I think that's another real great example of access. Uh, I was taught how to bring up a nonprofit that I have and they taught me how to make it legal and how to find funding for it. Um, so that's another great opportunity for access for entrepreneurs that Bradenton is already having. So a lot of these ideas are things that we already have that we're doing and that we want to highlight. Um, now, the air, how, how TEDx works is organizations don't come and talk about it, but people who have experience of access come and talk about their experience. Anything to add on that? Um, no, I just would say I was reflecting as I was coming here today on the many ways that I've been involved with the city, actually, not even knowing it sometimes, but uh, on here is the Urban Lab with New College, and I graduated from New College of Florida kind of a long time ago <coughs> now, but, um, you know, I, I remember getting to know Bradenton really at the start of the Hope Six grant that was awarded at the time that I was kind of finishing up um, school, and you know, over the years being involved in things like free tax return preparation that was partially funded by the city. Um, obviously, Realize Bradenton, I've been a volunteer for years as well as full-time staff, and you know, their whole motto is downtown is everyone's neighborhood. So I just, I really felt like, you know, this is an alignment for what the city um, can do, has done, and uh, you know, a message that will sort of, again, live out there now in the digital world, kind of, making more of an image for Bradenton. So just saw that with the Urban Lab. So um, community leaders involvement, this is where you guys come in. Um, we are asking for partners, for people to partner with us, not just financially, obviously the sponsorship is a big ask that we do have, but we're also, you guys have been working in the community for so long, you understand the community needs, you understand the initiatives that are going out there. Um, so we want community leaders to be involved in helping us curate this process. So um, we do have a team of curators and our plan is to, we're gonna have 15 speakers, so we wanna pick 45 top um, ideas. We're not looking at the individual. If the individual doesn't have experience public speaking, we will get somebody to train them. But we're looking is for ideas and the passion for Bradenton. And so once we pick 45 top ideas, we really want to bring it to community leaders for feedback and say, hey, these are the things that um, people are wanting to highlight. What do you feel about this idea? What do you like about it? If you don't like it, why don't you like it? And to help us really guide the process so we know that Bradenton is on this global platform, but it's also really shining in a positive light for all the good work that we're doing in the community. 
My favorite part. You want to talk about it? <laughs> well, you know them, so you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so one of the exciting things is that we have um, high school and college students curating the process. Um, so they're young. They have passions. They have idea of what they want to see in Braden Penn. So who better to actually sort through these ideas and score them and say, hey, this is what we would really like to hear about. And this is something that we think is an awesome idea. So they are curating it, obviously, under our guidance. And we would be working under the community leadership's guidance as well. Um, but they are just incredible. And they have just um, all reached out to me. I used to work for Healthy Teens Coalition. Um, working with you so they knew me and when I posted something on LinkedIn they each individually reached out and said can we please be involved and I said well what a great idea to have them curate the process and also it kind of um, keeps it as a clean process that we're not involved as we work with a lot of agencies there's no like favoritism they're just doing their thing and saying hey these are the ones that we really feel strongly about and of course then we would go and um, vet to people and see who they are, and then bring them up to you for feedback. Yeah, um, yeah. so that is our ask, is a, a partnership. Obviously, um, our biggest need right now is funding for video and streaming. The reason is, in the, and we only have a license for 100 people to attend, but because we're doing a theme of access, we really want to make it accessible to everybody in the community. So we're going to have live streaming throughout the community for free for um, nonprofits and schools to have this, the students also be a part of it and be able to, um, to see the ideas in the community as they're happening. Um, I believe you guys have our budget and our partnership requests. Our budget right now, it's a little under $40,000. And as you can see, um, a large part of it is the video and streaming. Ted has very specific um, very specific specs that they require us to comply with. There's a lot of post editing, there's a lot of marketing um, costs that go involved after the conference to make sure that it gets published globally. Um, so that is our biggest financial need for right now. Um, we do, we have secured a venue with uh, the bishop and they have offered it us to almost no <coughs> so we are saving a little bit on the budget. And in the meantime, just to mention, of course, we've been pounding the pavement, so to speak, you know, with asks out to local businesses and other kinds of funding partners. So I don't want you to think that, you know, we're walking in here like we haven't thought about that or <laughs> been busy looking to other funding sources as well to leverage as much as we can, you know, the community contributions and build a wide network of partners. Uh, Mrs. Barnaby. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we do have your information in front of us. Can you tell us what percentage of your budget have you already attained through sponsorship or gifts or what have you? Um, so right now I'd say about 10 to 15 percent. Okay. And that's mostly in kind, really. Right. And, and keeping in mind that we've really just started and fundraising can be a slow process, but we're really trying to wrap it up you know, by as soon as we can so that we've got the sponsors in line and everything in hand and, and we can proceed. Okay. And we do have um, the full budget and asking out there. We're just still in the process of having those meetings and conversations as, as you know, we really want to involve um, community organizations. And as you know, there's a process for that. It's not just like, oh yeah, I'll write you a check. There's an approval process and stuff. So we have asked two different partners uh, for the full budget in different areas, but it's a process because we're working with boards and, and, and steps to approve this. Right. All right. right. Director uh, Sarin, um, all of the partnership information that we received talks about having the ability to either pr provide the goodie bag or to put items in the goodie bag, so to speak. Um, I'm just, I'm just wondering. Have we looked at what we might be participating, if, if the board chooses to do so, um, what might we look at as far as an item to be put in? Do you have any kind of estimates or ideas about what that would be or and possible the cost of it? Because that may affect how much I would be comfortable being a sponsor at the sponsorship level. Um, in terms of uh, marketing materials like that go into 
goodie bags. Uh, Miss Kaiser and I have started looking to shop locally to try to get to see what are the different options. Um, and it all it all depends. You know, do you want a bag? Do you want a pen? So I don't have today concrete to tell you how much it would be, but there is a budget for that, and we can. We, we're, we're definitely we believe that in marketing and in marketing the CRA going forward better than we've done in the past. So it will be something so we will be have procuring. Set aside for that. Correct. Yes. <coughs> okay. What what column would that be under? Promotions. What? No. Uh, uh, yeah. The funding would come from what? Pro, it, it, it's either miscellaneous charges or it might be a marketing or promotions. I would have to check our fund, so I apologize. I don't know on top of my head. Uh, would it, I, yeah, go ahead. Would it, would it be equal percentages of money out of each CRA? The request would be out of the Bradenton CRA uh, because everything is kind of happening. The bishop is located in the Bradenton CRA. A lot of the watch parties that the restaurants are going to benefit from are going to be on Old Main Street and local. So the request, my recommendation would be that we just fund it out of the Bradenton CRA. Yes. Jane. So at this point, you don't really know what the topics are going to be yet? Um, so I can tell you the topics that I submitted for licensing that if we don't get an idea submitted, we have to actively go and um, recruit for them. And I've actually asked Catherine if she knew anybody. So the Village of the Arts is, is one. Um, things that are happening environmentally here, such as um, with the manatees, we would love to hear something from the Red Tide as well, what things are happening to kind of mitigate those effects. Um, and certainly something in healthcare is a huge need. We want to hear about stories of COVID and how we facilitated access with the volume and stuff. So uh, the topics that we, are, that we did submit for the licensing, we've had um, probably one of them covered. And if nobody submits in the next two weeks, then we'll be working obviously with leadership and say, hey, do you have a recommendation of where we should start looking? Well, I, I, I think my main thing is um, I, I'm not overly familiar with TEDx, but I know sometimes podcasts and stuff can get provocative, and, and I just feel like um, we're using taxpayer dollars, and we've been through this with public art as well. I don't think we should have things that will be controversial or provocative at all. I think that's, I, I'm not, it's fine to do that, but not using the taxpayer dollars. So I would want to make sure when you tell me high school students are curating it, I hope that we will make sure that there's not going to be something that's going to come up that's going to be a problem. Um, no, I completely agree with you. And actually, that is part of the TED guidelines. There can't be anything that's um, divisive or anything that is not um, science-based or experience-based. And certainly nothing that has to do with any politics that take favor yeah. one side, religion, any like that. And we are also held to the TED standards. Um, our license can be removed any minute if we do allow any of that content. So okay. I do agree with you. Okay. And then my, I think my next question might be to Katarina. Um, what, do we have like an annual budget for events or sponsored events or anything? We have um, allocated community events uh, for each district. Um, so, yes. Okay, this is, this that, is for the is next discussion oh, item, oh, okay. but, but if you want, you can use that as a guidance. So um, this would be all three CRAs? All three CRAs that we've done so okay. far, yes. Okay. Um, so we just wanted you, as we're doing these discussions about events in the future, kind of to help us guide the conversation. So at this point, we don't have a budget that we're working out of to know? We have, what we have available for the rest of the year? And we have available funds under community events for the Bradenton CRA. Okay. How much? 80,000. 80 for the rest of the year? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so I'd recommend that you uh, further uh, bet this and investigate what we actually expect that we, we want. And. Uh, and just determine what, what you think we can budget for and take it up at the next meeting. I don't think we've got enough information yet to make any kind of decision. 
I, I don't feel comfortable making a decision with not knowing how much we budget, how much we're asking for. I, you know, I, I can understand forty thousand. Yeah, of course. But uh, and what and what wh how that would have benefit our community with the taxpayer funds. And I'm not, I'm not really real clear on exactly what it sounds like a. Uh, a uh, public speaking process for people to learn. You know, I used to do that through the Junior Chamber of Commerce, but, uh, and, and it was good because you learn to be a politician. <laughs> Just joking. And uh, um, so anyway, uh, it, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying opposed to it. I'm just saying I don't know enough about it to, to say nay or nay, and I think it, this is the first I've heard of it, so I know you're wanting to get and get rolling for for September because that's not very far. But uh, I, I'd like some recommendations out of the staff to to move forward. Uh, okay, Pam, and then um, Mrs. Barney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my question is, and I I'm excited about this coming to Bradenton uh, from what I know of viewing a few TED Talks. Um, and it's also exciting that you're using young people. Now, <clears throat> in terms of your curators going out and getting ideas or what have you, are they going to only target youth? I mean, not to say that that's not a good thing. No, absolutely not. Uh, actually, TED does have a youth license. Ours is not a youth license. So okay. we could have... Evelyn. Mm -hmm. their brightness and their ideas right. um, when right. we're actually sorting through them. Uh, but it's not a youth event, it not is a uh, community so, members. But you're seeking your ideas just from that age group? No. No, okay. They I'm, I'm listening and not. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited sometimes. So what we did is we put out Ms. Evelyn, if you could speak closer to the microphone, <laughs> thank you. So what we did is we put out a call for speakers in the community um, everywhere, social media, news outlets. And so everybody is applying. And the, the whole beauty of access is that you don't have to be a known person in the community to apply. Anybody can apply. And if you have a wonderful idea, we will strongly consider it. Um, so they come into an email. It's tedxbradenton.com. Um, so starting April 30th is the deadline to submit, then we'll start sorting through these ideas. And the youth are the ones who are going to be uh, sorting through. We have created a scoring guideline for them, so it's not just like, I like it. We you know they're, um, the guidelines are how does, it, um, how does it really align with our theme of access. Is the person local? Is, um, is the idea innovative? Are they talking about something in Bradenton and what impact can it have in our communities? So they do have a guideline that we give them. Um, we're working closely with them throughout the process as well. Um, we're gonna have meetings with them, brainstorming, why do you like it, what about it, or what do you not like? And then we would um, pick those finalists and bring it to community leaders and say, hey, this is the content that we've received so far. What do you think? Should we get more speakers? Um, is there any ideas that you want to hear that we should? So it really, um, while the youth is working, we're going to be working with them and hopefully um, with community leaders such as yourself that can help guide the process. Ms. Barnum. Yes, thank you. Uh, that was the thing that I wanted to bring to your attention when you said that uh, once you, you have, you know, you've you've got this well of ideas and you try to call them down and you were going to have meetings with people to figure out which ones will work best for you and you kind of threw it out that you wanted all of us to participate. Should you do something like that, uh, as far as having a meeting, it would have to, if we're going to attend as a group, it would have to be a noticed meeting we would have to make sure that, that the press and everyone knew that we were all going to be there together discussing things, or if you just chose one elected official from each area of the community, um, I would still notice the meeting, but um, 
I, I just wanted to make you aware of that because we've had individuals come in and say, well, you know, I just invite all y'all to come. And it's like, <laughs> okay, but understand there are, are rules and guidelines that we all have to follow here. And, and don't be surprised if somebody says, well, if, if, if you've got one elected official there, I'm not sure it's noticed. I haven't seen anything. I'm not going to go because we all have rules that we have to follow. If I may ask a question, because we did have um, a plan on doing kind of a survey with all the ideas and sending it out to the community. Is that something that works? Um, uh, Mr. Russo, how comfortable would you be with that if they sent out a survey of the ideas uh, throughout the community, not just to the elected officials? Could we participate in that? Sure, sure. Okay. Sure. I just. We're just not allowed to sit down together and fill it out. <laughs> <laughs> one from column a two from column b yes so i quickly added up the list from the sponsored events that we've committed this year this fiscal year and i i came up with sixty thousand two hundred and fifty um that either have occurred or we committed like earth day um and so we have some funding available. We can always adjust it, but I just wanted to know what is that commitment in the Bradenton CRA as of today for events. Okay. okay. Um, and then this is being videotaped and it'll be out there. So, so for um, edification, um, when I think, when I hear TEDx, I think of South by Southwest in Austin. Is that, am I correct in? It's not yeah. official. No, they're different entities, All but right, I right, would right, say yeah. a similar flavor, a similar uh -huh. idea you know, very focused on innovation and sparking um, new ideas and conversations, sure. um, people who may not normally run into each other and, and making it a fun and, and immersive experience as well. Very mm -hmm. memorable. Right. And, and, and what does exactly TED stand for? Technology, technology education, and design. And design. Yes. yes. Technology, right. education, and design. Perfect. Mr. Chairman, I, my son and his wife do live in Austin, Texas. Um, they operate their own uh, restaurant, food truck, and South by Southwest is a huge draw. If you haven't ever heard about it or been to it, it's a massive, massive draw. I'm not sure we will see something like this with TEDx, but it is, you, number one, you never know. Uh, number two, many times events like this, we are, we're throwing a pebble into a body of water, but you never know how far the ripple effect will go. I mean, so are you looking to us to come up with how much, or? Well, I don't, if you're comfortable to, I mean, the, the, their ask is if we're gonna, if we're willing to support, to support them in a financial type of way, and then the question becomes how much. Yeah. Um. Well, it's a. It's a it, first time event. It's a first yeah. time event. It's in the Bradenton CRA. It's uh, it certainly fits into our agenda. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I, I don't know that anyone that we want to throw it out there today, but uh, uh, I mean, this is one of those things where we're looking at it for the first time right now, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we should probably. Mr. Talk Chairman, our, could, yeah. could we um, put this on our next meeting agenda yeah. to, uh, to, be, to be prepared to make a decision at that time? April 27th, I believe, oh, is the yeah. date. It's in two weeks. April, not in July. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> that works. And, um, and we have a presentation if we were to choose one of these. Is that what yeah. you're looking for? Yeah, and also keep in mind that um, TEDx partnerships is not just like give me a check and I'm going to put your name all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll work with you. What do you want to show off? What do you want to design? And we do have space at the Bishop. Mm -hmm. um, they've also volunteered some of their staff members to help you design if you want to, like, I don't know, create a huge picture mm -hmm. of the CRA and put it up there. We can do it. So okay. there's really. Um, we're up to ideas. We really wanted mm -hmm. to make it innovative. We don't want to go the traditional route of just putting your name mm -hmm. on there. We really want to highlight Bradenton. Yeah. I think it's a great and, idea. And if uh, Evelyn's okay, if I, c I can provide you with her contact information so that if in the meantime you have questions or anything, then you can directly reach out to her. 
So it, it can be on the agenda for our next meeting in two weeks. I think that sounds great. You all right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Okay. If there's anything in the meantime, we'd be happy to provide more information if needed. Okay. Thank yeah. you. I was going to give you the contact of as my seat for city council. I'm on the estuary program, and you were talking about wanting something on manatees. Yes. He'd be great yeah. at talking yeah. about red tide or red tide. something like that. We haven't gotten anybody on that. He's, well, he's so a much. good guy. Between, yeah. the, between that gentleman and perhaps Ed Childs, the restaurateur that owns several yeah. restaurants out on the island and is working with some is it start jane it's it's it, it, it that's his organization that to combat red tie right i think both of those yeah right he, he spoke and about yeah. the oysters and, and that's that's a good idea and, and the manatee especially being over at the bishop and, and manatees are getting a lot of attention they're getting my facebook uh, thumbs up because uh little boogers come up to my uh, uh dock or my uh, area where I live on the water and uh, there's not as many of them and, and, and you just hate to hear that, yeah. that as many of them are dying as they are yeah. it's like just you know it's like little I don't know if anybody watches those uh, home those uh, puppies or, or right. puppy meals and so forth I, I just turn the channel I can't stand yeah, to watch yeah. it so yeah. to see that many of them dying is is, is terrible and with the estuary program also you might I mean they have those um, vertical oyster gardens that yeah. they like to make and give to people yeah. might be something for yeah, no, a display yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a, there's a lot of information yeah. I think they get off that and reef balls the gentleman that does the reef balls mm -hmm. yeah. okay thank you. okay good luck yeah, thank you all. we'll see you in two thank weeks you. thank you very much okay um, moving down, uh, all CRAs, guidance on special events. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, at the last meeting, and I think rightfully so, um, it was brought up about we, are, we have been providing funding for several special events at different type of levels. Um, so just this year so far, we're committing, so we've committed to date 60,250 in the Bradenton CRA, 5,000 in the 14th Street CRA, and 15,000, 15, oh, I'm sorry, and 10,000 in the Central CRA. And so the question that I would, some, we would like some guidance from the board as to are there any guidelines that you'd like us to have? Are there any minimums or maximums? Um, do you want, are there any events that you would like them to be CRA sponsored events where we're the main and only potentially sponsor that are important to you? Or do you see us as sponsors to other events that other organizations are putting together? So those are some of the questions and guidance that we are seeking from you and uh, you have the summary of the CRA events. The first two were sponsored last fiscal year, and the remainder in this fiscal year. Um, I mean, I, I, this is a pre. Oh, I'm sorry, Barney. <laughs> no, go. No, 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 sir. No, you, I'm just you, gonna say this. This is actually a pretty uh, impressive event. That's kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, quite a, a, a smorgasbord menu of, of different things. I think it's a good pretty good start what would what would we add other than TEDx would come on here I, I have a question um, <laughs> have, have, Katerina, have you checked in with the, the uh, state you know I know they were really hard on this a couple of years ago and then it seems like they backed off I think there was a couple of state legislatures that was pounding their chest about uh, CRA money being spent on, too much on uh, events that they weren't really getting the the slum and blight out. They were more for entertainment. Is that is that still a danger zone that we should be in and be careful of how much we participate in this? Um, at the last FRA conference, there were a few sessions that I attended that they addressed this item. What I got out of it was that there's nothing that is illegal as of now or strictly and. Mr. Rudisell, please, if that, that's the way I understood, but please correct me if I'm wrong, that it's not 
there was some concern from the state about events, but that nothing has been prohibited to say, no, you cannot do them. My opinion about events is that they promote the community, they bring the community together, um, they support the local businesses that can benefit. So to me, as long as you can tie it to, to something to that effect, it's something that the CRA, it's our mission to do, so. Yeah. Government speak, it builds capacity. It builds capacity. Hmm. Uh, I think we're over capacity, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, the other thing I, I wanted, I've always advocated for, uh, was uh, to have our own special events coordinator or person that can do many of these things, um, like, we got farmers market and so on so on so on so on and much of some of that i'm sorry town halls and things like that. town halls community meetings oh well, yeah that's political i think but what? uh no, it's not well they could i i don't know but it it's like we got you know we got new year's eve we got you know uh, all these things that's right here listed and maybe it's something that we should be ever thumb on more so uh, and maybe uh, have some input or management of some of these things. I know they do in other cities. Sometimes it's, it comes out of the Parks and Recs Department that, that puts on sometimes some pretty big events. I mean, they put on regattas and fireworks shows and everything. Uh, they don't, they contract some of it out, but then you've got one person to go to um, in your CRA or in your city that uh, has all the knowledge and there's people out there that just love doing that and uh, have we ever considered that because we're getting quite a bit on the agenda that that needs maybe a little more attention well i would say i think it was discussed and patently resisted that we not become event coordinators that we <coughs> you know have other people do it we sponsor and help um, but, you know, I'm not saying, but that was a while ago. I mean, it was back when I was on DDA. Yeah. Um, so at that point, it was discussed, and they said, no, we are not event coordinators. So but I think Marianne was next. Sorry. Yeah, Marianne. Been, yes, Marianne, Marianne's <laughs> been waiting. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think that it might be helpful if we could put together um, a statement of why we want to see CRA sponsored events and what is the desired outcome from our sponsorship of these events, as well as come up with a matrix under which we can decide uh, if, it was a, if it was a fruitful endeavor, if the juice was worth the squeeze. We used to, uh, again, I'm sorry, back in the day, the, the CRA or the DDA at that point in time would, there was a policy where any new event would come in and the policy was stated that you could receive funding from the DDA for your first three years. Mm -hmm. Thinking that if this event was one that was, was beneficial to the community and that helped us build capacity that after three years of a successful event, you would have members of the business community want to sponsor it and to be associated with a positive event for the community. So we may want to look at setting up a policy with something like that. The other thing that you could do is if you decided that you wanted to continue to sponsor certain events, but you wanted to make sure that you retained financial backing to be able to do new events, you could set it up with a specific period of time and do it on a sliding scale so that the first year, the monies that received would basically really help prop up the event <coughs> and should you continue to, to help sponsor it for a period of time, if you wanted to say five years, each year it's a sliding scale down so that the last year you are not the major sponsor of the event and that again, if, you, if this event is one that the community wants to see happen, that businesses wanna be a part of, they would step up and at that point, the DDA or the CRA, excuse me, would be gradually stepping back into the background which would free up money for the newer events. 
looking at the list that we have here, I we've got a lot of, of different types of events here. I would like to see something included, and I'm not sure who would be interested in doing this because I'm not suggesting that our CRA staff take this on at this time. Look at this face that <laughs> I'm talking to you all. Uh, but to perhaps have a multicultural event that would focus not only on the African American members of the community, but the Hispanic members of the community, the Asian members of the community, and we may see with what's going on in the European area, we may start getting influxes of individuals from the Ukraine and from the areas around the Ukraine. I know that we have a small group currently, but we may be seeing more people sponsored over here because of the war that is going on over there. Something, something to consider. We have, we have historical events, we have musical events, we do art events, we um, have different kinds of cleanups and, and that sort of thing. But that's just my, my thoughts at this point in time. I do believe it is important that we have the ability to interact with people in the community that want to do these events so that it's not necessarily falling on just our staff to put these things on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it sounds great, but somebody needs to do it, not the city. Um, so when I got started way back when, um, I remember one of the first persons I met was Andy Miner from Downtown Progress, whom they started doing the get down downtown. So they, they, they invented that. And then, and then Andy came to me and was complaining that he couldn't do it, they couldn't do it anymore. This was basically a group of businessmen, it was a private club kind of deal. Uh, I think it was an offshoot of the DDA, but basically that the merchants were undercutting them. They were lining up. It was, it was a private, it wasn't private, it was businesses in the community that came together. Right. Yeah. And then there were some activities that appeared to cut off some people's noses to spite their face. So, so it was a group of, of businessmen that were, were taking it upon themselves to mm -hmm. do what, was, what became the first event, Get Down Downtown. And then the, the merchants were undercutting their ability to finance it. So they, this is when I got involved as brand new councilman. I was like, well, you know, I think they need to take it upon themselves. The Main Street merchants were formed. Um, but it all, it all came out of there and, uh, and then you know, little events here and little, and, and the other events were private run, uh, the Rotary, you know, I mean, you know, the DeSoto, the stuff that we're, we're aware of, there were the people that came and gave us, you know, came to get permission to shut off Main Street. Everything was on Main Street back then. So it's, it's kind of evolved is what I'm saying. And then the big, the big bugaboo, I think, was, uh, you know, a, a big event that, uh, uh, you know, drew a lot of attention and it was, um, but now what we're looking at, I think, what we're doing right now by sponsoring multiple events, small amounts, they're not, they're not our events, we're sponsoring them. We can, I think you could prove that every one of these is good for the CRA that they're in. I mean, I think our model is, is working, that we should not be event people, but we should continue to help, like the young ladies that just came before us. I think that's beautiful. They they want to start something up. If we can offer them, I mean, I already know, I already know what level I would be willing to to, to sponsor them with, and that, and that, um, you know, and and see what comes of it. That we we help them. I mean, I remember telling Andy Miner at the time that I, I because he was really perplexed that he thought he was doing so. I said I said Andy, I, I think you've already taught them how to fish. Now they need to go fish, you know, and 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 they did grudgingly. And That's then, a pretty good analogy that what we were trying to do behind events is teaching somebody how to fish so that they can eat for a lifetime. Yes, and, 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 and so it's, I think our model is working um, that, uh, and, and you know, I, I think that these uh, denominations are, are justifiable. You know, if you had it all in one event, you know, if I'm looking at 85,000 in one event, maybe you'd have a hard time explaining it, but you know, spread out over the uh, over the group of different ones. I think it's I think it's completely 
justifiable to the FRA organization. Yeah. I think the, the only thing I would probably ask, and I don't know um, how or what, but I would like to hear from the communities what we're not doing that, they, or what would they like to see out there, rather than us sit here and say, oh, we think you want a TEDx. Well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. And that's, that's the only thing I don't think we have done is gotten the feedback from the community. Couldn't we do a survey monkey though? Yeah, that, I, 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 I would, just would like to hear, I know Realize Bradenton used to do that all the time. What would you like, what kind of music do you want to hear? What, when they were doing movies or whatever, I mean, It'd just be interesting to, to have that feedback because we don't get a lot of crowd at our meetings. <laughs> so the feedback that I'm getting is whenever I go to the CCRA advisory board meetings, yeah. I've heard from the community that they want more events in their community <coughs> and they want them to be more cultural, you know, to what they're more interested in. For Teen Street CRA, the next at the next meeting, actually, the guild is going to be coming and making some requests from this board. They want to be able to do events, but they don't have the capacity to do it themselves, and they're going to ask for some assistance with some hard costs so that they can put events for whatever they want to do. And it um, sounded like we, we've only done 5,000 for 14th Street so far? Uh, is that what you said? Uh, 5,000 so far, so. correct. So 80 was only in the Bradenton CRA. The others have, I believe, 30,000, but we can always adjust the budget. There's money from other categories but that we can pull. But I don't think we should be doing those events. I think Correct. the Central CRA, they, they should start sponsoring events over there then. You know? They're wanting us to put the events on for them? No. No? They just want more events. They impression they want us to do it. No, no that they would like us to f help the funding. Yeah. yeah. It's just do something different. That's mm -hmm. I mean, you, we've got these things, and this has been going on for a while, and it's great. I'm not saying that, but now it's time to kind of expand mm -hmm. and do something different. Mm -hmm. add, add to our annual I, I agree. concert event. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I know for the, uh, you know, the Village of the Arts, um, they always tried to, pop, you know, blow their own pipes. I mean, you know, toot, toot their own horn. I mean, it, it, they didn't really want, they, they've enjoyed doing their own, doing their own events, but as they're maturing and becoming more of an organization, I, I think they've got some more ambition right now. Um, I mean, I, I, and I wouldn't be opposed to, uh, you know, them coming in for requests. I, I think Great. the main thing is as long as we as long as we've got funding, and if we can prove, and it's it's not a large amount of money's going in, mm -hmm. and we can prove that it's good for the entity, that it's you know, I mean it, it's not that events. The I remember the, uh, the 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 attorney general opinion on events, and it's it's like, it, it, it wasn't that they're not, you know, I mean I, I think it, it was. It seems to be not in the nexus. I mean, that was the terminology they used, the, the attorney general opinion. So, like, basically, big dollar events is not what they're, you know, the attorney general said may not be what the CRAs are supposed to do. But I think I think they would look at this kind of sheet all day long and say, yeah, this is this is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Well, and if if it if they were looking at the amount that was spent on the event versus the total amount in the CRA and that the CRA wasn't doing anything else, yeah. I think that's what attracts the attention. Sure. We, I believe, have a very well-rounded program where we're reaching out on all different levels mm -hmm. for all different items and all different mm -hmm. funding sources at times, so. Now, so if, if we had an extra individual that would be the sole person to go to in terms of these events, these sponsored events. That's not saying we're doing it, but that is a person that can concentrate on working with the different entities, right? Well, understand that we do have a committee with the city that has individuals from every department that, the, that events can interact with. And that is that group is what when it when you get an event to vote on, mm -hmm. it has been vetted by that group. So you know that um, 
Ms. Thomas in the mayor's office coordinates it. You know that the police have looked at it. You know that Public Works has looked at it. You know that uh, I, I get that but, Solid Waste has looked then, at it. This then that would be how many people they have to go to. <coughs> you know the entities that are working through this. Like they've been approved, and you know mm -hmm. all of that. But um, then they're working with who? I mean, oh. so so years ago. Um, I well, no, I'm, I think I think I got an answer to you for, okay. for how we did. So there was a person, the legislative assistant was Renee Raymond. Um, she helped all the, it, that position doesn't exist anymore. But she did, and this is when events started up, because there really weren't any events. And then we yeah. found out we needed an event coordinator. And she was doing it, um, and doing it well, and then lining it up. She had a checklist that she had to go around. And then, um, and, and it was, it turned into a very big job. It, it started off a small it, it, job and it turned like into a job. very big job. Well, that's what Kelly does now, right? Well, it got dumped on Karen first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because when Renee left and, and she could not, and she couldn't, I mean, it was, it was just, it was a bad idea. That was a Carl thing. And, and it was just not, not a good plan. And then we wound up giving it to Kelly who has the time to do it, but it is, it is a big job. It, it really is that's just to be the coordinator. That's what I'm saying. Seem like it would be one person as opposed to dumping that responsibility on someone, especially if the events are going to grow. You know, we'll have. I, well, Ke Kelly's been doing it. Uh, the mayor's the mayor's Kelly, okay. and, and she actually has time. Oh, so okay. I, I think okay. I think what I, we have now is I where have it a should be. Different idea for us. <laughs> Well, it, it, but the individuals or the committee that wants to bring a new event forward, um, there there is an event packet that you get Understood. and gives you all this Understood. information. Understood. But the individual that's doing that is that's in charge of the event or accepts a responsibility for the event is the one that has has got to be the the uh, catalyst for getting it done. Sorry. I get it. Okay. Can't change. Got it. <coughs> um, all right. So, um, Katerina, could I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah go Mr. ahead, Mr. Chairman. Um, Director Sirens. Would it be possible for maybe you and I to get together and maybe throw some thoughts together that we could, you know, you all, I have a little bit of experience doing events and, and we could put something together and bring back to the board so that you have uh, some sort of purpose or a mission statement behind why we believe that it's important for the CRA and the various CRAs uh, to support events as well as some sort of rubric for how to decide how much money an event could get uh, or what could be cons what you should consider when you're talking about you know, put put a matrix or something together that could be helpful for all of us sitting up here when someone comes up and says I'd like to do this event and you know I, I anticipate 200 people there and I want two hundred thousand dollars for the event and and you know we'd all go uh, no uh, but someone else could come forward and say I'm, I'm looking at an event I'd like to grow it over three years I anticipate for the first year to have 500 the next year to have a thousand and the third year to have 1500 this is my plan behind doing it and again we would have something to fall back on other than us just feeling generous and when you're coming up with something like that, kind of like how we do on the uh, facade grants where you assign points, okay, if it's yeah, got... Yeah, like, like a rubric or Yeah, I mean, I could see, that would be helpful rather than just willy-nilly, oh, they asked for this much, so we gave it to them. I think also, you know, as long as it goes along with our mission mm -hmm. yeah. as a CRA, mm -hmm. regardless of what CRA it's in, mm -hmm. you can develop the matrix right from mission. Right. Say, is it doing this? Is it doing that? But I Does think, it meet yeah. all of these things mm -hmm. and not just one or two? 
and these are this, and so going forward also the discussions I'd like to more have is some of these events we've fully funded them even though we're considered sponsors we've given a hundred percent of the budget so is that something we want to continue doing or not I mean and and we don't have to decide today since it's gonna come back just these are some of the uh, Every time you know I'm asked to make a recommendation, I'm not sure exactly what to do because, because we haven't, yeah. we don't know, we haven't it dealt be with so much for before. To give you their ideas, yeah. but right. I'm yeah. more than happy to sit down and, and try to wordsmith something that could be helpful. Yeah, like like when New Year's Eve was thrown at us this year. I mean, it was like either you help or it's not going to happen. And I think our comments were, we'll, we'll we'll give it a shot and we'll do it, but we're not going to do it forever. I know, there's, I know, but it just as an example, we can, uh, you know, I mean, just say that, you know, we'll, we'll give you a hand for a few years, and then you should be able to get your own sponsors and, and do it, and we'll still be a sponsor, we're just not going to pay the whole, the whole premium. Okay, we'll, I'll, we'll start throwing some stuff together, and I would welcome any feedback if you'd like to meet, and we can discuss further. But th these are some good comments and feedback that I heard today, so thank mm -hmm. you. Well, and also, you know, I think the concept too is you're, you're creating leaders by mm -hmm. helping someone start an event. That's, that's the birth of a leader. Or the next patient for some. <laughs> <laughs> Or council person, yeah, we could say patient, we could say council person. Yeah, mental, mental patient. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. It appears we have, have reached the end of our agenda. Oh, you have one more thing? We're st under other discussion, I have a few items that. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Um, very, um, very quickly, um, and you have a, a flyer a reminder about the community cleanup event um, that our CRA policing officers are putting together, and it's going to be in the central CRA area. So it's on Wednesday, April 20th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and we will start at the Martin Luther King Jr. Park and kind of go out to surrounding areas, so. Are they doing the workshop there? Yeah. We never got to that. Um, I think they are. I think yes. they are. Were they, yeah. they were talking about it. And I have. Yeah. Didn't, they, didn't they say they might they take it back to May? We're doing the workshop. It's, it, they did. I, I think it's been rescheduled a few times now, yeah. so. Uh, I, I, I believe that they were talking about doing the workshop on the the 20th. Yeah. I think I, that's what I understood. I did too. I think the mayor well, did say next week. When you yeah. schedule thing on Wednesdays. We mm -hmm. those paddles with all your faces on. <laughs> <laughs> I may need that because I've got another thing that day. Didn't you say you weren't going to be able to be there oh, on the 20th? Yeah, that's right. I don't know what we're doing, so how would I know? I, well, I don't know. We don't have any commitment or anything. Well, I mean, I, I think I think they were talking about it, and you said and um, you said you might not be here, and uh, then I thought they said they were talking about uh, May fourth oh, for the okay. workshop. Maybe that was it. I well, that's I don't know. What's Should we the, call I, upstairs? I've lost track here. What's the workshop for? This the the, the workshop it's that got no the workshop that got passed back. But what, see, what, what we're saying is this this is this is on Wednesday the twentieth. And the I comment was that we have a workshop then, and I don't believe we I don't know. chose on a workshop. I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. But what about the one that the 23rd, three days later? The 23rd? Earth Day? April 23rd. We've that's got a Saturday. An, that's a Saturday, and we've also got another event going on with Earth Day that day, don't we? We're, yeah, that's the way the event I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. You think we have a council meeting on a Saturday? No, 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 no. no. Oh. April 23rd, we have one at Reflections. Yeah. Right. Well, this is the one that the police department's doing, BPD. Yeah, I understand, but why would we schedule two of them that close together? 
we talking about the uh, I understand they're two different things, but we're asking for volunteers to go to both. Are we going to uh, push too hard? We may, but the the, uh, the reason that we pushed it was to accommodate uh, the board's schedule so they could attend if they if they chose to attend. Uh, we had originally scheduled it the week before. The reason that this has been identified as an area that needs some some tender loving care, and the reason it's on a Wednesday is because this city uh, sanitation needs to be involved, and it's the only time that they have a truck available. Uh, we have contacted even Rogers Garden Elementary, and they're going to partner in their area and clean up <coughs> the area so that we can get sanitation over there to help as well. Mm -hmm. So, I'm I have requested our city administrator give us some guidance as to have they picked a date for this yet meaning the workshop that we were talking about i kind of remember them talking about me it was it they were talking about on the 20th and then and then it, the discussion came up because i had to cancel because of my dental problem and then bill was saying he wasn't going to be <coughs> on the 20th, so we talked about the fourth i said what happened <laughs> But there was never a final. And there was no conclusion or decision or vote. Right. So the second item is uh, um, Ms. Kaiser and IT and um, probably a few others have been working together to, to put our videos up on the website. So we've had progress with that. Um, we have been working with a vendor. Now we're in the process of uh, reviewing the captions to make sure they're accurate. And so we're hoping that by the end of this week, potentially beginning of next week, that our very first uh, video is gonna be up from our meeting. So um, that's moving along. And the last item that came up late um, yesterday that needs to be on, discussed on this agenda, and I will need a decision of the board, is regarding the properties in the 14th Street CRA that we are interested in purchasing, the five properties um, that we we approved temp tentatively the contract um, back in December. So what has come up is three of those are vacant lots, but two of those um, are houses with tenants. And even though we've tried to work with the seller to, we've asked that they be evacuated by the time that we purchase them. Um, that hasn't taken place yet. So the next week is our last um, opportunity uh, if we wanted to back out, but I, I believe the survey, we're still expecting the survey this week, the environmental passed. So on our end, we're good to proceed. We have a tentative uh, closing date on May 5th. Are we speaking of the green properties? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so th there's three options. So as you know, the state statute talks about us working and relocating resident and not residents and not displacing them. So the three options would be if we didn't have the closing on that date. Um, do you want to go back to the previous? Or? No, no, keep okay. going. I'm if you I'm don't fine. want to, to have the closing on that date and move it forward, that was a proposal to the seller, but he wants it done on that date for personal reasons. Um, so if we don't have a closing on May 5th, the contract may be null and void, and we may not be able to purchase the properties. Um, the second option is we purchase the properties and then the tenants become our responsibility entirely. So then, you know, we're going to have to have our own process and work with legal to make sure everything is done the right way. And then the third option is if we can make an, in, an incentivize with the relocation costs so that the residents between now and May 5th can be relocated before we purchase the properties. So there's a few th items, and, and for that to happen, we would need an addendum to the contract. Um, so I need guidance as to kind of what route do you want us to take, and if, you, if, if there is anything that we need to do an addendum to the contract, I would ask that you authorize uh, myself and the chair to <coughs> execute any 
necessary contracts to proceed with that option and up to what amount we could incentivize for relocation. Jane. Yeah, um, the, the seller has some obligations here. I know he's saying he doesn't want to deal with it, but has he provided copies of leases with these people? Does he have earnest money in, in an escrow account somewhere? I mean, he can't just go, it's your problem. I mean, he has some obligations to us. Cash only. Pardon? There is no cash. There's no cash lease. Cash There's, There's nothing. nothing. Okay, well, it's then just... they become, but is he holding any kind of deposit money? But, but uh, my question Not is, why, why was it this vetted at the time of purchase, at the time of offering? You've got to know if the refrigerator stays or the microwave stays. Why don't you know if the people stay? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, miffed by this process that now we're talking about it and we've already made a commitment, but now we're finding out that there's a, you know. Well, we're in our due diligence period. Are we? So, Are we? Okay. It's so we can back out, um, but maybe that, but I don't think that's what we want. No, that's not what we want, but yeah. it's just like, well, come on, where was our. So, uh, what's the least expensive um, <laughs> on the front end or eviction. Well, I don't think we want to be landlords. No, no, right. no. And the eviction process is not fun. That's what um, we, right. We, do you think that he might be incentivized lesser to say, hey, you need to do this for Well, I asked that question. Did you say that something about a 1031? But that didn't make sense. Oh, you don't. Uh, there's, uh, he has some other obligations that need to happen on on his end, so that we initially we proposed if we can move the closing date to June, so then we had ample time to do that, and he said no. Well, I propose if if we if we we should put that burden on him. I mean, he he, he wants he still wants to sell it. I'm quite sure, and uh, that we put that burden on him as a condition before we make the purchase. And we just have to, I, I don't think we need to burden ourselves with that because that could become a, a real, real, real big problem. And I, like I said, I wish I'd have known this three months ago whenever we, this should, this should have been disclosed. And help me out, Mrs. Realtor, you know stuff like this is, is not new. I thought new. it was vacant land, so. I, 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 I did too. I didn't know there was some tenant in there. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, this this came up there, at the beginning, and 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 actually, our realtor um, said that he thought that he could probably relocate him himself. That that's back that, in January. That was the discussions yeah. that we started the discussions back in January, and now here we are. So, I it, don't want to lose that property. That property is incredibly important to what I believe everyone here wants to see happen with the Village of the Arts. Um, But as, as I seem to remember, it he does not have leases with the individuals. It's like a month-to-month -month thing, correct? Yeah, tenants and what is that? And uh, yeah, month-to-month -month tenancy. And they have how you can force we, them to get out in 30 days. Is that it? it Maybe less than that, but but yeah, there's a process to evict the tenants. There was some Mr. Staggs from Blaylock who's helping with this process. Um, I, th I believe he mentioned 15 days, um, and I don't know the state statute to quote, but he believed that if it happened this week, we still met that 15 day until May 5th. Well, this is, in, in many regards, this is similar to what happened with the Love Apartments where the city owned those apartments and needed to assist with Yeah, we had, we had lots of time then. We had, yeah. we had a third party do that for us too. Correct, and we, and we looked back, we gave them a thousand dollar relocation assistance and we also gave them two months rent and the security deposit if there was one. So in this case, there's no security deposit. Inc uh, rent is approximately 900 a month and it's two properties. So I'm just trying, so if option A of, you know, we may lose the property, then that doesn't seem to be an option if I'm hearing you all. So then the other two options become, do we want to incentivize them between now and May 5th? What, <coughs> what can we do to I know the seller. 
and he's typical. <laughs> what can we do with the realtor before we take ownership? Well, to like incentivize, to the incentivize them before we take ownership. Couldn't couldn't we incentivize them that it, they will get X amount of dollars should they move out by this date before. prior to May the fifth? Yes. You wait until May the fifth to move out. We're not giving you anything. Yes, that's 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 what I'm saying. Yes. I mean, Mr. Rudisil, can we do that? Yeah, I I think that's that's probably kind of the the tact that they took with love, right? You give them this offer and you say, here's what we're going to offer you to relocate voluntarily. And if you don't do that, then we're going to pursue an eviction process against Are you. Are we going to immediately demolish those? If you all right. give me that direction? Because I would say would the, the worst thing will be is we pay the incentive and then they come back. Because no, that's what's going to happen. I'd say we should yeah. clear the land as soon as possible. Yeah. Because you don't want squatters moving. Well, and you don't. You, we don't want to be landlords on property that I, uh, real property, like a house that uh, I'm not certain meets. <laughs> That's enough. We know what you don't want to go. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um, so so why don't why don't we just. Uh, we did discuss this. At, uh, the 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 assumption was that Barry was going to take care of it. So here we are now. Um, let's just go back to that, to, and and we can well, offer incentives to get it done before. Because as soon as we own it, then we have to um, we have to move them. We have to find them right. a place and all that. Let's well, not do Mr. that, Mr. Chairman. Perhaps. Um, I'll, I'll offer a motion, and if I don't get a second, that's fine. And if someone could wordsmith it better than me, or Mr. Rudis, so you're looking like kind of perky over there. Is there something you want to say? Hey, uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to understand because I heard Katarina saying that that maybe one of the options is to offer a financial incentive to the seller. Is that something that's been discussed that they would be perhaps more willing to take on the responsibility of evicting the tenants if we? incentivize, incentivize the them is that is that what you were saying I I'm no no okay no the discussion yeah well I'd say you know I, I like that kind of like that idea that that hey you get you get rid of the people what whatever they're paying now 800 a month 700 whatever it is and we'll pay one more month but it's your job it's your job to do it I'd rather do that so you all want let me suggest this as a. So, I know the seller. <laughs> you saying you wouldn't go for that? I, I you don't want to. Don't want to mess with. You don't want to do this. He won't. No, no he'll want to keep the money yeah. and do nothing. So, that will be bonus money. So, mm -hmm. so I think. We well, have yeah, to take it out of closing. The realtor. Can we work with the realtor? The to, to be the middleman for us. Well, he, he has been acting yeah, as the middleman, but we haven't gotten anywhere with the seller. They've basically said, we're not getting rid of the tenants, as I understand it. Okay, but, but having the realtor be our agent to relocate, hiring him, hiring him to be the re relocation person prior to ownership. And are we even able to? Do, do this when we don't legally own the property? It, that, not without the assistance of the of the seller. I mean, yeah. okay. there's not there's not a ton we can do. I mean, I think if if you don't want to go back and try to work something out with the seller, I think you could just allocate a certain amount of funding that that Katarina is authorized to use to offer incentives to the tenants to relocate them after, after by, the close by the date by the closing date. I don't know that we're going to be able to do it while the seller still owns the property. Okay, so within three days after the closing date, <laughs> is that a, is that considered reasonable? I doubt it. I mean, okay, we, give me a definition of a time that's considered reasonable that is not thirty days. Well, I just I don't know at this point what we're gonna. I don't know what we're gonna be able to do as far as negotiating with the current tenants before we close on the property. Now, we may be able to, but I, you know. So could there be a hybrid approach of an X amount that we give to the seller and then a 1,000, I'm just throwing a number out, relocation assistance to the, 
to the tenants, and that way all parties are incentivized to be out by May 4th. Why do we have to incentivize the seller if we're going to be incentivized? Yeah. I, I don't I mean, I'm just trying to make sure we don't lose it, and then that hopefully to avoid us oh. carrying a problem oh, once we, we can. Mean, this yeah. public discussion, I mean, you've kind of lost your authority here. <laughs> Right. You're because the thing could be to the seller is if you still want to close on this date, you need to at least cooperate with us. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the CRA has the ability to evict the tenants. Like, you know, do we want to avoid having to deal with that situation? Yes, if we can avoid it. But at the end of the day, we can do that if we need to. And keep in mind, the CRA does have other properties that it is a landlord on. So it's not, not like this is totally foreign to the CRA. I, I understand we don't want to be the landlord and, and that we tried to, to push that back on the seller. But if ultimately what I'm hearing is we want this property and we're not willing to go back to the seller and say, either you get rid of them or we're walking away from the deal, then you know we got to be prepared to take okay, care of it so we're closing on may the 5th which is approximately 21 days from now three weeks from now yeah so if we close on may the 5th what could be a reasonable time what is considered reasonable to ask the tenants to vacate and we could sweeten the pot if you leave by this date we'll give you this much money if you don't leave until the 25th of may we'll give you a laurel and hearty handshake what if we did like an addendum that said that we would agree to close on top uh, that we would agree to credit at closing whatever these incentives are for these tenants to the seller but he's got to get them out by that date we will help pay for that incentive We'll pay for that incentive at closing, but he's got to get them out in advance. Well, I, I thought that's what right. Katerina was saying, that he would not He wouldn't do that even a, if we paid for it? Because that's basically the same as amending the contract to say we're going to increase the purchase price by this amount if you have the tenants yeah. out. Yeah. No, what he didn't agree on is extend the closing date. Is something he was very adamant on keeping it on May 5th. Out May the 5th wants to be out of, the, out, of the, out of the ownership by May 5th. And I haven't had discussions with him, so I'm just communicating through our realtor. So, yeah. um, I just um, is I, I, I just have a strong feeling that if we offer any money, he's going to want to stick it in his wallet. So oh. our, 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 our in is the, the agent. It's to get the agent on his behalf. He's working as the agent. To, to figure out how to get how to get something to get him to get these people out of there for him for the seller maybe we could I mean could we a, authorize it's, a seller, it's, a, it's my opinion what was that total seller, purchase price seven hundred fifty thousand yeah. three hundred one no no seven thirty five seven thirty five okay excuse me I'm fifteen thousand off that's seven percent that's a fifty thousand dollars why would we put incentivizing anybody the real estate commission and he owns he's he's a broker isn't he is, are you talking the, about who are you talking about? I'm talking about um, Barry. Barry, he's Mr. he's Chris. agent broker. He, I thought he's Does, broker. He's getting a seven percent commission on that. He's getting some commission. Well, well what's that. our contract say? I, I, it's I believe it's paid by the seller. Well, he the, the seller has an agent. The seller so has an agent. So then he's being so compensated. The co, co broke. Okay. Right. right. Okay. It's a co broker deal. So. The seller pays the commission, so it's not really ours to negotiate. Right. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I could, and I apologize, I'm going to have to leave in about five minutes. Uh, perhaps what we could do is have the board authorize a certain amount of funding, whatever number that is, because I didn't know this issue was coming up today. Um, I didn't either. So that could be used either to enter into a, an addendum with the seller where they would be required to relocate the tenants to where we could get that money back if they didn't, or that the money could be used directly to incentivize the relocation of the tenants either before or after closing. Mm -hmm. 
So do we need an amount to know what that amount? You had an amount, didn't you? Because you did two months. Two months rent at nine hundred dollars. If, if we did what the Lava Apartments, then you're looking at about thirty five hundred or so per, per house, not is, per renter, per property, per so, so about to 7, about seven thousand or eight thousand, whatever you wanna throw a number. Allow us to work with uh, to, Mr. Staggs and Mr. Grooms, and then figure out right. what we need to do. I, which I don't know at this point. It's just this just came up. I'm comfortable Mr. with that. I, I, yes. Uh, and, and to me, it's like, so, I mean, I, I'm aware of the problem and who's in there and, and also what's around. I would, I would think that if someone, once again, I, I, our agent should be able to maybe he, I know at one point he thought he had properties that he thought he could move them into. But if we could just find some other properties to move them into and, and we cover the money to get them moved, that seems like that'll, I, I just don't think we, well, I mean, worst case scenario, we can take the property with them on it and just start eviction. But it'd be easier to, to clean it out all at once, right? So, uh, it, Mr. Chairman, could Mr. Rudisil restate what you said? It would be a motion to authorize the CRA executive director to utilize up to whatever the number is to either to be used either to relocate the tenants or to um, pay the seller to relocate the tenants. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion with the amount being placed at $8,000 or less. I'll second it. All right. And, and to also authorize us to proceed with any addendums or legal documents that are needed to that effect. That I that would amendment. include that, yes. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Be nay. 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 Whatever you want. Okay. Nay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Um, that it? I believe that, that our city administrator oh, yeah. has come down. I will be in full disclosure i texted him and said we need guidance regarding the workshop that the city council will be undertaking do we have a date please come down and assist us with this because of the conflict with the cleanup oh, yeah. that i know has been scheduled at least one other time possibly two other times trying to accommodate schedules and has to be held on a wednesday to be able to have the public works equipment and staff that we need. So Thursday work. Oh, next Thursday? Yeah. So I got, the, I got a couple things that I can I can reschedule. Yeah. So you are looking at Thursday the twenty first? Okay. At what time? Uh eight thirty nine. I would say started at eight thirty. I know we normally start workshops at 9, but to start it at 8.30 because there's quite a lot on that agenda, if I'm remembering correctly, if we keep the same agenda. Mm -hmm. um, there is. I, I, didn't, I expect we could probably get through within a couple of two and a half hours, but I'm not good Wait, at trying I, to guess where it would be unpredictable. P Pam, are you going to have trouble with that because you have Wednesdays clear oh. and not Thursdays? I'll do it. No, no. I, mean, is that I, I can just take the time off. It's okay. I, I've got enough time to reschedule and move some groups here, there, and everywhere. But thank you for the indulgence. I apologize for That's right. being able to work as a schedule. There you go. Someone That's what I signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So we will have the workshop then on April the 21st. We'll begin at 8.30. Okay. And the mayor? Can the mayor do it? <laughs> Can the mayor do the workshop? He's not here. Yeah, we have not heard from him if the twenty first if he's available I, on the twenty first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I'm assuming he, you, you got with him. Okay, okay good. Yeah. Issue is, and I said I could probably do it on Thursday. He didn't want to do it. Okay. While you're on that, while you're on that, this was before me. I think it's when the workshops were put together, I've been told, 
that they were to be run by the vice mayor, which is a council member, because that's they felt that they had more. I don't know, Mr. Roth is was around. I wasn't around, yeah. and it, and I don't know if it happened for a while and quit or it just didn't happen. They is that were, true or not true? When, when workshops <coughs> started, um, they were. They were started as being a, not a council meeting. And I apologize. The mayor was I have a, yeah. yeah. That's, that's. I don't know. So why aren't we doing it? Mary Ann, do you want this back? No. Oh. Yeah. When have you done it? Well, we haven't done it since I've been here, but I was told yeah. that because it yeah. was a, it was a. But this is a, that, that is a discussion for the council yeah. members. That's not a discussion for the CRA board. Okay. Yeah. Are we going to, we're not going to have a meeting. So I'm assuming that the scheduling will tentatively work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll talk to him. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if there's nothing else on the agenda, right. do you have? I have nothing. Does anybody no, no, but I just want to make a point here that yeah. we just scheduled a city council meeting yeah. in a CRA meeting. We What's are the trying difference? to accommodate a CRA. I understand, but, but the rules should be the same for Everything is we get, can't make them. an event is completely. You're talking about than changing policy. policy. Huh? Changing okay. the policy. I move to adjourn. Second. I have, uh, and I it, did. Any of you guys intend to get uh, some tickets that I ended up maybe getting by mistake that was in my inbox? Is, is did you get any? I haven't gotten. You haven't gotten any. Have okay. you, Mary Ann? Have you? They were passed out to everyone to share in the community. Yeah. I'm just people. curious why I got them. I didn't ask for them. It was something that the Marauders, as I remember from when we first started doing the Marauders, um, they are tickets that are passed out amongst community members and leaders to pass out in the community to try to encourage attendance at a minor league. I, I, that, I, the question was do I have your tickets? You have your own. Yes. 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 Everyone's got a staff. She said she didn't. Yet. So did I get? I, I didn't. Did you already them. get tickets? No. This is it. This is them. I, I I just wonder why I got them because I didn't request them. Well, we've we've always we've always gotten Marauder tickets. Not since I've been here. This first year, of four years, uh, I've never gotten any. Okay. I mean, I could have, I guess, if I asked, but I, I didn't ask. So I, I'm just curious if I got yours, Jane. Did you get yours? You got yours. Okay. So Pam, maybe I got yours. I don't know. Every council member Kelly. was to get tickets. Well, she said she didn't get them. I just curious. Well, it. No, I. Ju it's just because I hadn't gone to Kelly yet. I hadn't had a chance. No, they were in my box. I can only say what. I'm just saying. Hey, look at. P -p 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 I don't want to be accused of having somebody else's tickets or taking tickets that, that that I'm not entitled to that somebody else requested. That's all I'm saying. I. I you know, it's not. We can double check. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairman, you have a motion second to adjourn. Okay, we have a motion second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Don't you dare say nay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>